Welcome back to Rover as they do a little bit of prep there for uh, the next heats of racing. Lots of action on the sideline. Great to see motocross coming back in a big way. Record entries and I think we've had a little bit of heated conditions. We probably would have had more crowd. Great to see Prepsol there sorting out all the motorcycles in between the heats. And now time to go to the ladies, two strokes and senior support. Nanda has moved up into MX3s. We saw that last week, which means that there's a number one plate up for grabs for all the lady riders. They're going to have to fight hard with the senior support and the MX2 strokers as they go through into turn number one. It's a good start there from Kayla Roth. Looks like she might be the leading lady as they came through there. And Tegan Reed a bit further down, not quite getting the start she wanted there for the D-Force team. Kirsten Lightman has joined us for the first time in motocross in a long, long time. And you can see at the front end, it's Brad Harrington who leads things out at the moment with uh, Gareth Coyle Dowling having a super start on the two-strokers. Alec Combrink in the mid-pack. The big man, keep an eye on him because he's certainly going to make his way to the front end if he can. And looking for maybe an overall win here and possibly the senior support class as well. So the fullback is Lario de Toy. He leads at the stage and uh, didn't quite see his start, but Coyle Dowling is all over the back of him. Two two-strokers at the front and getting away from the rest of this pack. There's Combrink as he starts to make his way to the front. Alec Combrink. Oh, what was that? Straight over Matthew Hills. Hills going down in the turn as they came out of Sycra. And you can see just stuck in the middle there. And Alec Combrink was like, I'm just going to ride over his bike. Fortunately, not over the rider. Combrink with nowhere to go, really. Once you've caught a line and you come through the turn, you've got to try and hang on to it because that bike could go anywhere. Moving up in second place. Wow, what a move there from Kayla Roth. The D-Force lady is certainly on fire here this weekend and definitely looking like she might be the lady to catch this year for the MX ladies category. Combrink's thrown in to close her down and eventually finds a way through as they come flying through the motor section. Just behind them, Scott Haygate going to go and try a run with Alec Combrink. The two support riders going to try and work together, if they can, to catch the lead rider, Lario de Toy, and of course, Gareth Coyle Dowling. They've got onto the back end of the four bike that Suzuki has been closed down pretty rapidly. And now as they come through, oh, it's very close. Very, very close there. Further down through the field there, that's Brad Harrington. Harrington also starting to make his way through on the uh, two-stroke. Oh, a little goggle adjustment. Ooh, right hand got a bit squirrely as Alec Combrink did that goggle adjustment. Probably not at the right place, but in the right place right now is Scott Haygate as he goes to second place. Laurie Latoy taking some strain. Gareth Coyle Darling also starting to make his way through the field rapidly along with Brad Harrington. 100 bike there of Rodney Udendahl. He's in about fifth place in the senior supports. Looking a bit further back there in the ladies category, we got uh, Kirsten Lightman hanging on. Here she comes. Uh, the leader, Tread KTM, doing a great job up in the second place. And in third place is Leah Haygate. So not a bad effort then, not a bad day for the Haygates at this stage. Over the jump, and to finish things off, it's all about Combrink. He wins overall. He'll take senior support as well. The ladies, though, is going to go to D-Force and into the hands of Kayla Roth. She'll be ecstatic about that. Overall on the day, Kayla Roth taking it over Leah Haygate and Kirsten Lantman. Janka Peterson, Kylie Kotzer, Jenna Bowling, Terry Palmer, and Tegan Reed in the top eight. Let's catch up with Kayla. It was pretty good. I uh, had a good start. <sighs> Tried to find new lines, smooth lines to make sure I was safe. It was pretty, pretty good. Got first. Happy with how I rode today. It was just a really good day. Um, well done to all the ladies who raced and can't wait to see what happens in the next one. Well, I can't wait to see what's going to happen in 1-5 to five high school class because we've got 25 of them in the gate this time. As the gates drop, heading down towards turn number one, Cam Durrow is the man they all want to catch. Where is he? He's not at the front end, that is for sure. As they come through there, it's a fantastic start from Cam McClellan, and it's Regan Wasmuth who was fighting with him as they went through turn one. Now up over the Thor section for the first time, seven riders in the air at the same time. 51 leads out, it's Justin Sangster. Where did he come from? Sangster leading things out, that's a complete change up, and definitely not what was expected. There's Durrow in the mid pack. Fighting side by side there with the 39 bike of oh, Christian Salias, who got a great start. This man got an incredible start. And he's pulling away there from Fenter. Dalton Fenter in second place. As they come through there, Regan Wasmuth. Oh, what a problem. In the mid-pack, the 4-6 bike of Grant Hutton dies. And he's caught out Darrow. Darrow has been caught right behind him and is now losing positions. Hand over fist here. One, two, three. Almost 10 bikes going past Darrow as he got stuck behind Grant Hutton as Hutton just stalled in the dirt. Mark Hardy trying to make his way through rapidly and just getting it. Oh, he's out the front door. That's a big crash. Mark Hardy right out the front and not the way you want to be doing things there. 
Well, fortunately he got up and he got riding again, but Cardi with a massive, massive moment there for the Cardi racing machine, and unfortunately has been caught out big time there. Well, here we go, that's Wasmuth fighting hard and just showing the way around to Miguel Duval. Duval just not able to handle the big maneuver that was just pulled on him. You can see Hutton's back up and riding. A little bit better this time from him. How far back though is Duro? Duro won't be happy about the fact that he got caught out and couldn't get past and eventually just stalled the bike in that turn. The change up for the lead is imminent. Look at Fenter. He is all over Sangster. And he's on the inside. Sangster going to try and keep him honest. No, he can't. Sangster just keeps it buried around the outside. Look at this. This is amazing stuff. As they fly down that ski jump on the back section, eventually Dalton Fenter hits the front on the CRT bike. But here comes Sangster straight back at him. This is absolutely incredible racing. Not what we expected, but of course what we've seen for a long, long time throughout the various seasons over the last couple of years. One, two, fives in the house. Oh, there's a big moment. And Grant Hutton just chucked that motorcycle away as he slammed into the wall. Well, fortunately, coming through there was uh, the 384 and right on his tail was 84, Leonard Atoy. Just missing out. Dalton Fent has crashed out. Our leader has crashed. And it looks like he's sore. Oh, that is a massive, massive maneuver right in the beginning of the season. You don't want to be having injuries at this part of the season, that is for sure. And Dalton Fenter looks like he might have injured his arm. So it's now up to Sangster to lead things out. How far back is Darrow? Is he going to be able to get onto the podium? Yes, he is. He's just squeezed through to third place just before the chicken flag comes out. He couldn't catch McClellan. Cam McClellan stepping up into one, two, fives and onto the podium for the very first time. And the overall podium, nonetheless. Cam McClellan coming through there in third place with Durrow in second. A massive turnaround from Justin Sangster to take the overall win here today. I got the whole shot, was winning. And then he snuck up the inside in one of the big berms. And then um, I think two laps later, he uh, had a big crash. I think he broke his wrist. And then I just rode my own race and then yeah, I got the result at the end of the day. Join us after the break for some more action from Rover Motocross Track here in Port Elizabeth.